a wonderful applause to Lara Ricote. Hi. Hi, thanks for being here. This is really great of you all. Uh, my name is Lara Ricote, and uh, I am a middle child. Uh, yeah, so some of us, I imagine we, there should be a couple of us here. Yeah, uh, I, it's, I don't feel like I, I am a middle child. I don't feel like that, that's a, a place where I, I belong. Um, but apparently that's exactly what middle children feel. Uh, they feel like they don't belong. If you look it up, middle child syndrome, you feel like you don't belong. That's pretty much it. So, so it's that. It's um that is that weird feeling that that you get that you that you think that you should be defined by something else, but all of these things that define you are actually the ones that do define you. But you're just saying no at all times. Um, and I think that might be the theme for my story. You can you can let me know in, in about twelve minutes. Uh, my, my I was raised by by an atheist Venezuelan dad. And um, like a really, like a really intense atheist one, as intense as you can be. And then uh, a spiritual Mayan mom, like a, she, she's Mexican. She believes in all of the parts of the Mayan religion, the stupid ones and the smart ones, and they're all based on on numbers. She says, and and I to her, am a tierra eléctrica, which is an electric earth, and um, that is my energy. That those are my numbers, and uh, based on that, uh, my my energy. She says uh, is is of this always in movement, and so when when I die, my energy will continue to be here, right? And and it will always be interacting with other people's energies, and it will it will stay this way forever, no matter where I go, my energy stays. Uh, to my dad, that is hilarious. Um, he thinks there's there's to to my dad, I am a person now. Um, when I die, I will cease to be one. Uh, everything about me that existed will cease to exist. And um, maybe I'll be buried, so then I'll be in the ground, or maybe I'll be ashes, and then I'll stop being anything. Um, that, that's pretty much it. Just a lot of a darkness in, in that path. But <laughs> that, that's what, what he believes, and that's what she believes. And they raised me and my sisters to believe that, that we could believe in whatever we wanted, basically. Like, if we wanted to believe in that one or other one or what, anything else. Um, I have a question for you guys. If you feel comfortable answering it, you can pretty much just... A survey, if you don't answer it, you will skew my results, but... Um, how many of you were, you could just raise your hand, born into a, a religion? Okay, and keep your hand up if you're still in that religion. Okay. How many of you, we can all put our hands back down? This guy's like still in it. <laughs> good for you, man. Yeah, good for you. Do whatever you want. Um, how, how many of you guys were born into a family like like mine that just told you you can believe into in whatever you want? All right. Yeah, this is the kind of place where you would find those people. <laughs> uh, keep wait. Keep your hands up. Uh, how many of you decided to go into a religion? <laughs> All right. Well. Uh, in, in, my, in my case, I, I spent the first 12 years of my life and I didn't care for religion. I just wasn't involved in it. There was no one around in my family who was, well, my mom, whatever. That was like number stuff. That wasn't religion. <laughs> and uh, she, so, so what's it called? We, um, yeah, so I wasn't involved in it for the first like 12 or so years of my life. And then when I turned 13, my parents stuck me in, uh, they, they sent me to a, a, a Jewish middle school, right? And then everything changed because I, was in a Jewish middle school. I started in involving myself with, with uh, people who were going to their bar and bat mitzvahs, and, and that's a time where it's so exciting. A bar and a bat mitzvah, bat mitzvah, bat mitzvah. For those of you who don't know, it's like a coming, coming of age party. So it's, uh, they tell you that now you you're, can take all of your responsibilities and be an adult in this world. And so it, all of my friends were doing that. You know, at that moment, they were, they were uh, going to these classes, the Torah classes, and they would invite me to come with them because they were really excited about it. And so was I. I was really excited about it. So I would go to the, to the Torah classes, and uh, little by little, I started to love Judaism. I was like, this is for me. Like, this is exactly what I've been looking for. I was like... That I would keep the Sabbath day holy, you know, and I would I would go to Shabbat dinners, and uh, everything about it I just thought was so special, and all of my body, my 12-year-old, 13-year-old little body wanted to be Jewish. And my parents were like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> they were like, and I was like, you said I could be anything I wanted. They were like, this is not what we were thinking. <laughs> and 
I was like, what kind of hypocrisy is this? And, and just the whole thing was just like this back and forth, and they were just telling me that, that it made no sense, you know, for me to be Jewish. Most of all, because you can't just do that, you know? That's not the way that works. You gotta be like married into it, I think. I didn't look that far into it, I was 13. Um, and, uh, and so they, they tried to find a way to get me out of it. So it was at the same time, there was a recession, and they said, well, I went to this expensive private Jewish school, and uh, when the recession came, they were like, oh, we can't afford it, you gotta go somewhere else. They sent me to another school. They sent me to an art school. Um, and there I learned, I learned about a lot of different things, mostly drugs. Uh, <laughs> that was like a, I didn't do them, I didn't do them, but, but I saw them. They were everywhere, you know? Like, my friends, these new friends, they weren't into religion, but they were into psychedelics. Like, they fucking loved it. Yeah, some of you too. It's all right. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, they, they, they loved it and, um, and the arts part of the school was really great, but it was also like not giving any emphasis to the academic part. So I was like, if I stay here, am I talking too fast? Should I chill? All right. So I get a little excited because all these people and stuff. Um, anyway, the, the arts part of the school was was uh, really, really great, but the, the academic part, they just, like the teachers were straight up just like, they just didn't give a shit because no one was listening. And um, I got really frustrated, so I told my parents, I was like, if I stay here, then I'm not going to be able to, to continue my studies. I'm going to have to repeat this year. And they were like, okay, we'll send you to another school. And they chose a Salesian school, which, was, um, which is a branch of Roman Catholicism. Um, there was a nun principal. I don't know why they didn't see it coming. I, I don't know in reality. But, but they, they sent me to the school, and there's a nun who's the principal. And within the first week, I sign up for the first religious retreat because... That's the type of person that I am, mostly. I just want to get to know all these things. And by this time, I'm 15, and I, I get to this, uh, to this retreat, and it was called the Cornerstone, which is like the first building block that you put down before you build, which is obviously a metaphor, you know? It was like a metaphor for like the first cornerstone, and then from there you build your religion, and you can ask all your doubts, and God will be there to, to guide you through them. And I was like, cool, let's do this. Like, let's, <laughs> let's get in there. And, and I go, and I get in there, and uh, it, was, it was truly incredible. Like, I, I was in awe at the stories. There were these things called witness talks, so people from my class would tell stories about their lives and just tell you about things that you would have never known. You know, the guy from my math class, homeless guy, apparently. We're 15, you know, he was homeless, and then the, the school started sponsoring his, um, his, uh, that's funny? No. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> Homelessness. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> Sorry, uh, the, the, the guy, okay, so he was homeless and the school started sponsoring him. It was really crazy awesome. He started going to school and, and it was just like the way that he would talk about it was like, thanks to God I have this thing and like, and I was like, wow, God is the coolest. Like, fucking hell, why didn't I know about this for all these years, you know? And um, <laughs> it was really exciting. And so then I leave that retreat and I go home, I run home and I'm like, I'm like, Papa, encontré la luz, la encontré. And my dad's like, and I found the light, I, I found it. And, and um, my dad's like, que light ni que light, like whatever. He's like, he's like, those are all stories that they're telling you. It's like Santa Claus, but for adults. I was like, I don't like that at all. And I go to my room, I storm in there Roman Catholic style. I get, that makes no sense. <laughs> Just so you know, there's nothing behind that. Uh, I go in there, I, I storm in the room, I'm pissed as shit, and I just decide to keep going to these retreats, but just not tell them about it, you know? So I'm just gonna just do my, my Roman Catholic thing, and they, they can do their thing. And, um, <laughs> and like, I'm 15. And the next one, um, the next retreat was called Encounter Through Christ, right? Three days. We're encountering Christ. They don't let us have phones. So, <laughs> well, we get there. We get to the retreat. They take our phones away. It's a bunch of nuns and priests, and we're all sitting in this in this room. Not those kinds of priests. The good kind. I'm pretty sure we're really old. We're like way too old. Um, <laughs> just a little. <laughs> anyway, so we get, we're in this room and we're all talking about love and fulfillment and relationships and everything that's good in the world and how to make it better and it's awesome. And I wear hearing aids, right? I'm hard of hearing in both of my ears. Didn't matter to this story. I wasn't going to tell in the beginning. Whatever. I could hear your laughter, all right? We're fine. <laughs> so I wear hearing aids in both of my ears. And um, my battery on one hearing aid, like, battery. And I'm like, fuck. Because if I can't hear, how am I supposed to find God, you know? <laughs> and then the other one's like, battery. And I didn't bring extra batteries on this retreat because... <laughs> Well, I should have. There's no good excuse there. I should have brought extra batteries, and I didn't. And I'm, I'm freaking out. Both of them turn off. And 
I was like, I, I gotta find a nun right now to get me like a phone so that I can call somebody to get a battery for my phone, for my for my hearing aid. And I find this nun and I'm like, I'm like, nun, um, you, that's what they all call it. Nun, uh, you, you need to help me. Like my, both of my hearing aids have run out of battery and how am I supposed to find God if I can't hear or whatever? And she's like, find the fucking battery in a second, right? She like, gets me the batteries um, where she puts them on and I'm, I'm happy and she's like, wow, like there's so much longing in you to, to find God. I see it so much. You have so much light in you. you. And I was like, thank you so much. She's like, you could be a leader in our faith. And I was like, oh. <laughs> One more time? She's like, you could, you could be a leader in our faith. And I was like, oh, that's incredible. Um, Thank you, whatever. And and she nominated me for this for this retreat to be a leader in the faith for my school. Right? And I like I like the sound of it, but then what it actually was was like a week in a convent with nuns and a and hundred of the most spiritual individuals in the US. A little bit intense, I thought, you know, like and I'm I'm a flip flopper, you know, I like I like a little bit of Judaism, I like a little bit of you know, I don't know if I'm about to get into this this way, you know? And, and she nominates me, and I get it. And I and and um, but you had to pay for it. And I was like, ah, oh, someone else should be, like, someone should be given to someone else because like I don't know. And there's it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of commitment and whatever. And she was like, she thought that it was so modest and humble of me not to accept it. And so she gives me a fucking scholarship to it. And she's like, she's like, no, no, this is for you. Like God has chosen you. And I was like, all right, well we're going to New Jersey. And <laughs> God and I get on a flight with a bunch of nuns and uh, and we fucking go to New Jersey and we spend one week crying our eyes out with like, a bu this is God and I, crying our eyes out with a bunch of nuns and a hundred of the most spiritual, but like, you know, like really just like believing so much and everybody's on the same page. And I'm like so confused because I've never been baptized. I've never read a page out of the Bible. I was just like, you know, like I, I read the Torah a little bit. <laughs> and I, yeah, I just, I wasn't, I wasn't, um, I wasn't fully there and it was really overwhelming and uh, all of these nuns that had literally given their entire life to the church and they were old and, and um, I just, I, I felt stupid being there because I was like, someone else could have this that would really appreciate it and, and I shouldn't be the one to be here. But I had said it and they wanted to pay for my trips or whatever, so I went. <laughs> all right? And uh, so I, I'm there and I come back and I, I give a witness talk about it and I read it the other day and I end with like a psalm. It's really intense and I don't know where I got the psalm from because I've never read the Bible. <laughs> and um, but I end with a psalm and I say this and then they ask me if I wanted to join the church so that like my kids would be in the church as well and all this like just a lot of commitment, you know? <laughs> and I was like, actually, I don't think so. I don't think that I would like to, to join the church. And they were like, okay, that's fine. Um, we'll give you all the papers, take them home, like do as you please, whatever. And I was like, no, I think that this is where my relationship with religion will, will take a little break. You know, like you, you don't have to have all the answers by the time you're 17, you know? Like this is not, that's not how it has to be. And I, I felt like I was like running towards some type of end goal, but there's none and, and it's fine and that's great. You know, you don't have to find the idea that's better than all the other ideas. You can just mingle and talk with some ideas and hang out and, and you'll figure it out as you go. Um, and so, so I decided that that was that for, for that time. And, um, and it did, it, it, was a, it was a good decision for like about a year. It, and on October 22nd, um, I walked into this huge building um, with said Scientology. And, uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. That was, that was the end of it. <laughs> I, I, I just, just want to scare you guys. <laughs> that would have been a bad one. Uh, no, I didn't. I'm not a, not a Scientologist. I'm just pretty, pretty agnostic, I would say. Um, but yeah, but that was, that was my, my journey with, with religion. And thanks for listening to my story.